And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Around the Bases with Bubba and Mo, episode 75. Got a fun one tonight, you know, after the last couple of weeks of trade deadline bonanza, eh, things have slowed down on the MLB landscape. So Mo and I will keep you busy with the little bit that's going on. Mo, how we doing, man? Doing well, episode 75. I'm sure it's going to be a short one. Like you said, last week was, uh, like I said, I was sweating at the end with all those trades. It was a lot. Yeah, it was wild all the way down to, to the last one. But uh, we'll, we'll start off with something fun, something you might get to talk about for a while. I'll just get my popcorn ready and uh, prepare for maybe some comments <laughs> in the comments section or something. But the Red Sox took care of business against the uh, Arctrial Yankees with the sweep and are now nine and a half games up on the Yankees. What once was thought to be a neck and neck race to the end looks to have quite the gap for me now. And it looks like the Yankees are playing for a wild card game versus the A's potentially. How did you enjoy the weekend, Mo? Uh, the weekend was tremendous. Uh, just just a normal weekend, you know, just a quick sweep of the Yankees. Re- honestly, though, um, good for the Yankees. They won last night, and they, they actually got a half game back, so they're nine up uh, now. So that that's a win for them. It's it's it's, it's really exciting for New York. Um, the great thing about this is the way they ended it, and I was at the game on Sunday, and it was – I had the worst seats in the building, but it was tremendous. I mean, it was truly – truly incredible to see them get to Chapman and let me tell you they own Chapman I mean they really do I think he's got like an eight ERA or something like that against the Red Sox in since coming to the Yankees so he's what did you hear what JD Martinez said about him they're not scared of him right what did you hear why uh he said he, he basically said you know, it was one thing when he was the only hard thrower out here. Now everyone throws 100 mile an hour, so That's nothing true. special. Nothing special about what he does anymore. That's true. He was throwing <laughs> 103 before it was cool. So, um, yeah, it's look. This team, I've said it all along. I picked them to win a division because I just thought they had the deeper rotation. Maybe you know, it with Severino, he's there, but Sales obviously better than Severino. I sailed. I think they. Sales will start tonight. I think they pushed him back because of that they because they swept. And I even though I still think there's there might be something there, but it could be a semi break. That's that's really the talk here. But he's going to start Sunday supposedly. They're up nine games. It's over, Bubba. It is over because now, granted, the Red Sox have I think like eighteen of their next twenty nine are on the road, or nineteen of the next twenty nine are on the road. So this would be tough. But we're talking Toronto. We're talking Baltimore this weekend. They're gonna they should take four out of six of those at worst. Um, but it's baseball, you never know. The Yankees are gonna play in that wild card game, and my bold prediction of Oakland beating them is gonna happen. Luis Severino Bubba um hasn't, hasn't made it to the sixth inning in his last five starts, and he's allowed three earned runs, four earned runs, six earned runs, six, four. Um, and he's getting hard hit, and it's he's not getting unlucky. Uh, his you know ERA obviously in those games are very high, and his FIP is pretty much the same except for the the two six run games where it's like half, and it's still over five. So there's something up there with Severino, and if they don't have Luis Severino, it's over. I mean, if 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 he continues this run, they may not make the playoffs. Even though I think Seattle is going to go down and come back to earth with what they were, and they've got Cano back whenever he comes back, and got to figure that whole situation out. Um, but yeah, it was. A tremendous weekend it was just inc- i mean oh there's nothing better than sweeping the yankees in four games and you end it like you ended it granted and what one last thing about two of the games the porcello start was unbelievable he cost 86 like six pitches 86 freaking pitches he cost he had one hitter and i'll i'll enlighten everybody um the furniture store around new england jordan's furniture they do like a furniture you buy it during this time and something happens with the Red Sox, you get it for free. It happened in in uh, 04 when they won the World Series. And then they said, okay, it could happen again. So if they have to sweep, and then it happened in 07 again when they swept, this year is a, a no-hitter. So Porcello came out after the game and apologized to everyone because Jordan's furniture had to give out $150 million worth of worth of free furniture, granted, you know, insurance and stuff. But that could have happened too. But, yeah, tremendous weekend. Two and a half hour games in two of those. Which compared crazy. to the five hour on Sunday at eight eight p.m., so that kind of sucked getting home at two a.m. But listen, it was awesome. 
Yeah, the two and a half hour games is more impressive than the sweep to me. That's the right. crazy part. The Sunday um, game was was the same amount of time as I think those Friday and Saturday games. It was unbelievable. Yes. Pretty crazy. And I pulled up uh, fan graphs real quick for their playoff things that we like to look at a lot. And even after being down nine to the Sox now, they still have a 99.7% chance of making the postseason mm-hmm. with a 91% chance essentially to win the wild card and face the A's in the wild card game. So things are looking good still for the Yanks. But if you look at it, they're only three up on the A's and only uh, five up on the Mariners. Like literally one more bad week. This could get really, really interesting. Um uh, for the Yankees, because if uh, people can read, and, you know, I listen to podcasts because I don't like to read. So I understand if you're not a reader, I get it. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I can't. But, read, um, so the, the headline, the headline or the, the title of this podcast are the Yankees are dead. And you could hear it in Mo's voice. He was so close to saying it. He really, really wanted to say it, but he didn't do it. So but I'm, I'm a say realist. It. So I'll say they're, it. They're, they're going to get Judge back. They're going to get Sanchez back. But I, if you're saying that they're dead to win the World Series, fine, they're dead. The, it's the you can't get to the wild card game with a, a a guy like Severino pitching like he is, and then win that game. You all saw what happened in the wild card game last year against Minnesota. They are dead now. My bold prediction is that Oakland beats them in the wild card game. But even if they don't beat them, and Sale's fine, they're going to see Sale twice, and we're going to see Severino once. And which Severino are we going to see? That's the real question. I don't know what Severino the Red Sox will see. Yeah, and uh, on Severino's note, uh, Paul Spore does his fireside chat with uh, Nick Pollock from the pitchers list, and they broke down Severino this week. And a lot of it has to do with like his changeup usage. It's not moving the way it was. They're hitting the crap out of it right now, and he's having to go a lot more fastballs, which become a lot more predictable. And it's not pretty for Severino, who what a month, month and a half ago we thought could have been a Cy Young candidate, and now we're just trying to get him to be a quality starter. So bad news for the Yanks. By the way, last thing. Um, I know everyone kills Devers for his defense, and, and it's true. But Andujar has to make that play. I, I walked in that series, and I, I try to watch the Yankees as much as possible. It happened last night too. He holds on to the ball for so long on ground balls. I just I don't understand it. it he's got to get that last out to get that win. So it's you know it's on Chapman, but he's got to make that play. Okay, I'll, I got one more. Um, do you think? Be a realist here. Do yep. you think? Your starting pitching is good enough to go against the Astros. I know your offense is. Does your starting pitching match up? Maybe not one for one, but for a series, can it hold up long enough to beat the Astros? You ha- I think, and I heard this point. I forget where I heard it. The Astros, their bullpen was so bad last year that they had to hit their way out of it. And I think it's possibility that the Red Sox could could do that as well. But if I'm answering truthfully, the answer is no. Unless Chris Sale says I'm going to win both my games, and then and then you just got to figure it out the rest of the time. That's that's the key. I mean, you just have to, and you you don't really know what the rotation is going to be if Erod comes back. Then we have something there, and then maybe after Price starts one game, he's a super bullpen guy in a in, in a short leash for Porcello or Erod, because you you really don't know right now who's going to be the fourth starter. In my opinion, it depends on when they're home or not. You pitch Price at home if you can. And then you figure out the rest of it after that. Because I think when you talk Price, Erod, Porcello, you'd probably take Erod based on how he pitched this year, but it's really a toss-up. So the answer, Bubba, is no compared to Houston's rotation and even Cleveland too. I would take probably take Sale. You could toss it up with Sale and Kluber. And then you take taking Bauer, Carrasco over the rest of our rotation. So it's even Cleveland too. Yeah, no, that's what I'm, I'm wondering because, yes, your guys' offense is probably the scariest in baseball right now when it's clicking, but uh, that pitching staff still leaves me a lot of desire. I, that's where I think they needed to do something at the deadline, and maybe they still will in this non-waiver deadline. We'll see. Yep. Um, so speaking of non-waiver deadline, we had a trade that was going to happen before the before the regular deadline, and it was Mike Fires to the athletics, and it happened for a future consideration – Mike Fires, Bubba, has been has been very good as of late. Very, very good. So decent pickup for the A's. I figured they just picked him up so he could face um, Stanton in the uh, wild card game. That's what I <laughs> thought he was for. Uh, intimidation factor. Yeah, uh, right. yeah. That's what I figured. You know, you, you go and knock Stanton out of the game, you lose Fires, big deal. You, you're up the man. But uh, yeah, no, he's been actually really, really good. And it was kind of one of those signings we talked about in the beginning of the season that he's there for the Tigers to move for – a prospect or two, something not a big time prospect, but something because they need depth, depth, depth in their minor league system. That's all this was. It was nothing fancy. 
at all. It helps the A's a ton. The Tigers get a little something out of it. It's a good move for them for the stretch run because their starting rotation outside of Manaya and now Cahill, who could fall and hurt himself at any moment, but when he's pitching, he's been outstanding. He reminds me, and people might get me flat, Cahill right now reminds me a lot of what like Charlie Morton was last year. He's just a guy that just throws it hard, throws a slider, prays it works, and goes. But Morton's a little more reliable. But they now they have somewhat of a three-man rotation you can count on now. Not the sexiest, but it's there. And if they can mash and you know get to that bullpen, which is deep, 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 it's a huge gift for them. It really helps because people got to remember, when you get to the postseason, you really only need a three-man rotation, especially when it's veteran arms like that outside of Mania, that you don't care if their arms fall off at the end of the year because you are not gonna, you don't need them anymore. You're going for the run, and it's, it's a great move for both sides. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, it, it, he's been great lately. I mean, it's it, his worst starts have been like four earned runs. He's made it at least to the fifth in all of his starts this season except for one. So he at least hit, eats some innings up. Um, we all know what he is for the most part. He's just a, a kind of a journeyman pitcher. He had, you know, a great couple of years in Milwaukee. But, yeah, good pickup for a team that, you know, isn't deep in the rotation. And, and right now, like Bubba, right now for the athletics, who's starting that wild card game? It's Manaya. Manaya, right? That's what I was saying. Honestly, I'd probably rather have Cahill out there for the veteran and just yeah, he's, then you get to the pen. I, give me four innings of Cahill and then go to the pen. I'd almost rather have that. Maybe that's what they decide to do. People are going to say Manaya because he's technically their number one. But when you really think about it, give me like four or five innings of Cahill go to the pen. I think I'd rather have that. It's and it, and it all depends too on when they clinch. I mean, there's a possibility that they could get be close to the Yankees, or possibility that Seattle's close to them, so they might not clinch right away, and they'll just have to figure that out. But yeah, lately Cahill that has been incredible, and he's got the the way he's pitching right now. He's got the best stuff in that rotation, just the way he's pitching right now. Yeah, most definitely. Now that was one waiver wire move, and we expect to see more because. Most people don't think there's a lot that goes on here, but let's not forget Justin Verlander was a waiver wire move last year. So a lot can happen. There are some names out there that can definitely help teams out. And, you know, some guys might have held on to players thinking they still had a chance. And like my Giants, who I wanted to trade earlier, they got to know by now as bad as it is. They, they got to sell. So Jim Bowden, our good buddy Jim, he's got some uh, some yeah. waiver wire some waiver wire targets we can talk about. We can just kind of spitball real quickly. Uh, we don't have to go too deep into any of these, but – Let's just go through his list of 16 targets here real quick. Uh, Josh Donaldson is a guy, you know, coming into the year, we all expected to be traded. He can't stay healthy. It's hard to trade a guy when he can't even get on the field. So what's your thoughts on Donaldson with the Blue Jays? I I have a developing take with Josh Donaldson that depending on Devers' health and the way that Mitch Mullen has hit in the last month and a half, there could be a possibility that the Red Sox get him. I don't know how, but – with what they've done with J.D. Martinez lately, where the advanced metrics are saying that he's a lot better in the outfield than he's been. Jackie Bradley hasn't been hitting, so they've been putting J.D. in right, Mookie in center. Slight chance the Red Sox could go after him. Um, I think there is probably not – Oakland would be interesting. I don't think he's there, and I don't think he can go to the NL just because I. who knows if he can throw. So if it's not the AL, then it's probably not happening, and they're just going to keep him, which means – Vladimir Guerrero Jr., unless he comes up in September, will be in purgatory in Buffalo. God, I mean, God bless that kid being in Buffalo because it's it's that's a shithole. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many more to say about that. I'm let that one go. Um, uh, I could go on a Richie Incognito rant right about now. Um, the question I have though, so if the Red Sox get him, yeah, you really think he's gonna, he's pretty much DH only. You don't think he's going to take Devers' spot, do you? Well, so that's the thing is like depends on Devers' health. You, but, but but I mean Donaldson's not even healthy. No, I know, but there's a there's a slight possibility that he's been out for two two months. Maybe he can throw, but you're trading him. You're trading for him as depth for September mm -hmm. and to be the DH in the playoffs because Jackie Bradley Jr. can't hit. So that's how you you got to just got to figure it out, maneuver it the way you got to just because. I mean, if Pierce is going to hit like this and Mullen's going to hit like he's hitting, you just let Pierce go. I, I know he's a lefty killer for the most part, but you he's just let him go. He's been yeah. mashing righty since he came over, so right. he's doing right. he's doing it all. Because uh, yeah, he could play first, but if Pierce is there, yeah. It'll be interesting. Depth is good. Depth is good. Yeah. But uh, I'm just curious. 
Okay, here's one from the Giants, Andrew McCutcheon. And he was rumored to be going to teams like the Indians and the Phillies and maybe even the Yankees at one point were kind of talking. There's there's teams that could use a veteran outfielder, at least as a fourth outfielder or a platoon outfielder type deal. He makes a lot of sense to some of these contending teams, really does. Shouldn't cost a ton um, coming over, but at least a little bit to help the Giants. I think he's definitely um, one that should be moved if the Giants pull their head out of their rear end. What do you think? Yeah, Philly makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, obviously you're not taking Hoskins out of the lineup. You're not taking a du- Oduble out of the out of the lineup, and then it's it's just really a Nick Williams um, sort of looks like King Kingery <laughs> platoon right now, according to roster resource. But um, it, even though Kingery really hasn't played out there, but it's just been Nick Williams for the most part. So who's been better lately? But yeah, the Phillies make sense. I mean, the Indians obviously make the most sense. I said last week that platoon plus you net you don't know about Brantley um he could get hurt any day so the both those teams make sense for McCutcheon yeah I think that's a good one you think the, you, th- you think the Giants the Giants have to trade him right yes yes get they do for him even they though they should. won't get anything they'll get a lot something, of something yeah. something better than nothing yeah um I think he should move and there's I, I honestly think whoever they can move right about now go for it just start yep. moving people I, I don't care I said it before if Bumgarner can get you a haul, trade Bumgarner. I'm okay with it right now. Yeah, velocity I'm, down, not good. No. Uh, let's talk Irvin Santana. He's made two starts since his return from the DL. Hasn't looked horrible, but has not looked like the Irvin Santana of what we expected last year either. It'd be kind of a depth call, maybe something that helps an A's or even a Red Sox that needs a fourth pitcher or something. Um, he, he makes sense to a team like that, and the Mariners are always willing to deal. So what's your thoughts on Irvin? Not a big Irvin guy anymore. Um, you know, he did have a good year last year, but – uh, peripherals were not as great as you would think. You know, the 3 2 ADRA, um, low BABIP. You know, he has a tendency to give up the home run a little bit, but he did win 18 games. So he's a proven pitcher, a little bit older. Um, you know, I'd have to look at the graphs right now for the pitch velocity to see where it's at right now. I had it open. It's, it's down. Uh, it's way down, like yeah. way down. Like he was around like 92 and he's low, 90, 80. Yeah. 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 It's, so it's, I'm not an Irvin Santana guy. If you're giving up nothing and and you hope to get – and just maybe get a couple starts, like you said, out of him, that's great. But, yeah, it doesn't look good for him. It, it's really a, just a lost season, and and you have to th- you have to wonder what kind of contract he'll get next year being a free agent at 35 years old. It'll probably be a deal, actually, next year. He could get a nice little cheapy, sure. like $7 million deal and maybe an off season and more rehab will get him yeah, back. Texas will do it. Yeah, there you go. Or Baltimore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kirby Kirby Yates, San Diego Padres closer. This guy's been great all all year, and he's he's fell into the role and looks really really good. He's an older reliever. The Padres love to flip relievers for prospects and build a farm system out of it. It's worked very well so far. Uh, this guy makes a logical transition to somewhere, but if you really think about it, most of the contenders they've already got so many relievers now, and it's hard to keep just grabbing guys. I know they will, but. He should move, but I don't know really who needs him right now that's actually in the race, not some team that thinks they're in the race. See, I disagree. I, I don't know why the Padres would trade him right now. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'd keep him talking about who's going to give you a deal. All of a sudden, he's throwing a splitter, and it's like the second-best splitter, maybe the best in the league, um, according to fan graphs. So I don't see why they would do it. I know he's 31, but he's under control for, I think, three, four more years at cheap, cheap money. Maybe next year. You know, We, we didn't see this coming with Brad Hand last year. So maybe next year they flip him just like they flipped Brad Hand for the Francisco Mejia top 20 prospect of, of a team that needs a bullpen guy. Um, I think that's probably what happens. I don't know why A.J. Prello would trade him right now. Yeah, it makes no sense. Uh, he's still got to have someone there to get the job done. So it makes sense to kind of hold on to him, see how that goes. Uh, Adam Jones of the Orioles, we already know Machado's gone and uh, Scope's gone. And they're pretty much if you have a pulse and he can be traded, they will trade you. Adam Jones seems like a tough one to go. As they've kind of said, he's not going anywhere. But if the right offer comes along, it makes sense. He does have his 10-5 rights, so you got to make that one work. But he makes a good fit, kind of like McCutcheon to Philadelphia. That makes the most logical sense to me. But other than that, maybe a Cleveland or something. Yeah, I I don't think he's going anywhere because I think Cleveland probably would have been able to make the deal. And they decided, like I said last week, that Leone's Martin in terms of defense um, and the same probably hitter that Adam Jones is right now. He made more sense, even though I thought it was kind of underwhelming for, from their part. But at the same time, I, it just it doesn't make sense for Baltimore to trade him now. Just let him stay and finish out his his year there. I know it's not his career, but he is older. 
Um, and then they can kind of – he can figure his way out next year, uh, you know, on a different team somewhere else. Maybe it's a contender or – Maybe he just wants to help rebuild somewhere. I don't know. He's a good clubhouse guy. So yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. All about that clubhouse guy. Let's go. talk of let's talk about a guy that should be on the Red Sox. Um, Adrian Beltre, as the trade deadline was coming down to an end, he said he wants to retire an Astro. He's not going to waive his clause. And then like two hours after the deadline, he's willing to waive his clause to go to a contender all of a sudden. So it makes me wonder if there's even a deal in place for him to move anywhere. He's been injured off and on, but he seems like a logical fit for Boston if they can't get Donaldson. Uh, that's about all I got on him. Yeah, it, it's the same thing with Donaldson. It's one of those things where it depends on what Devers has got. Um, I'd love to see him back. I love Adrian Beltre. Guy's a Hall of Famer. He was tremendous here in the one year that he was here. Um, if it happens, it happens. And, you know, if it doesn't, I think we'll, we'll still be all right because he's, he's not the Adrian Beltre of old, but still a decent player. Kyle Bearclaw looked like a good guy to move about a month ago when they put him in the closers role. He was dealing. Since he got into that role, he's been absolutely terrible. Say, it's been bad, really. It's Even today, Don, Donnie Baseball came out today and said they're going to pull him out of the, the closers role to get his mind right. They're going to go by committee right now. That obviously lowers his trade value, and um, it's going to be tough to move this guy. And I know they want to really badly, but I don't know many teams are going to want to be like, yeah, give me Bearclaw who can't pitch right now. Yeah, he ate three eighty RA in July and nine and two thirds, and then in the inning he pitched in in August the last seven days he let up nine or nine runs or or five runs. Sorry. Um, so yeah, he, he has not been great. I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think anyone wants him to go anywhere right now. Uh, Matt Harvey of the Reds. We kind of thought he'd be traded eventually from the Reds to help, help build them more. It'd be one of the greatest moves in Reds history to trade him for nothing and get probably something decent in return. Cause he's been okay. Last couple starts, not what we saw the previous like three or four, but it only makes sense if a, a piece of, um, poop emoji, goes to Oakland and helps that uh, rotation out because he fit right into the sewer system there. But um, Matt Harvey to Oakland seems like the most sense to me. Other than that, he might be just sitting in Cincinnati and enjoying his skyline chili. Look, whatever. He didn't come to the Red Sox, even though those rumors were there. So yet, I yet, can't talk. Yet, let me, yet. Let me, he's not coming you to the Red Sox. August 31st. Yeah. You have to they're August 31st. Make, they're not making that move. They're already over the luxury tax. They're not making a move for him. If they're going to make a move, it's for Beltre or Donaldson or a bullpen piece. Um, Harvey, the funny, how, how do, how do the Reds not figure this out, Bubba, and pitch him in this series? That's what I want to know because then, I could, then you could watch that game. That's like a, that's a perfect, like how does, how do Fred Wolpon not call the Reds owner and GM and everybody, we got to pitch him here. Cause we, we need to sell tickets. We got to have people watch a game on SNY. That didn't happen. It's kind of sad. I'm really sad about it, Bubba. I'm really, really sad. The bright side is Matt Harvey had a four o'clock um, media appointment oh, set up, set up yesterday. Coach Callaway had one too, and they yeah. asked, "Hey, can you move yours up half an hour so we can have Callaways at four? He says, "No, oh, I'm at four. I don't give a shit." Basically, it was yeah, amazing. That, it was Matt Harvey to a T. Yeah, yeah, but that's perfect though. He he must hate Mickey Callaway. He must hate that guy. Oh, he loved every minute of it. It was just amazing. I would love to see his face. Um, I actually kind of want him. Hey, if the day you want to send them to uh, the Giants for free, I'll, I'll, I'll at least be entertained every five days. There you go. Um, Dan Straley, this seems like a, an actual move that could make sense to a contending team. It's kind of going to be repetitive now. The same teams we've mentioned that could use a starter or a long reliever, a little veteran leadership. Um, he's not going to go for free because they still have him for little, uh, at least another year or two, I believe. But uh, Straley could be dealt. Yeah, could be dealt. I mean, he's been better in terms of, you know, ERA and whatnot. Has had a few good starts, but it's still the peripherals are there. He's not a great starter. Yeah. Starling Castro, he's had a good last, you know, month of baseball, but he's been kind of the same old blah, blah, blah. Your boys have Kinsler on the DL now. That could be an option maybe. But other than that, I don't see a fit for a second baseman anywhere. Yeah, I agree. I don't think they're going to make that move probably. It just doesn't make any sense. I think Kinsler will be okay. One of the most um, lucky slash overrated relievers in baseball, Shane Green of the Tigers, somehow pitching the way he pitches gets by. It blows my mind. I just can't see it working in a playoff series. But uh, he's available because the Tigers will trade anybody right now. I still don't see him going anywhere, though, because I think teams are on to what he's doing. Unleash Joe Him Jimenez, please. Yes. Unleash this kid. Let him go. I mean, it's going to be – I own him in uh, my dynasty – one of my dynasty, and he he's been really good in for holds. He's and in a couple saves that he got here and there. Um, he's been the guy that they thought he was going to be. So let's unleash him, and you don't really have to talk about Shane Green. This the the frisbee thrower named Sergio Romo, who has like 
two good start, two good outings, and then throws three just meatballs that go deep. He's available for the Rays. I could see him helping a bullpen being super cheap, but again, when it when it's on the line, this isn't Sergio Romo from like 2012. This is a different Sergio Romo, so be careful. Yeah, it's a bullpen guy. This could be a Red Sox target. Um, you know, his sw- swinging strike is still around 13%, so it, it it didn't it dropped from you know the 14.8, 14.9 that it was at the last couple of years, and then at 2015, 16, 7. But you know, it's not it's not awful. It didn't drop off crazy, but um, and he can also play third base, so that's good. Yeah, and he can start if you need him to. Like if Severino gets y- yanked early in a, in a wild card game, the Yankees can bring him in in the first inning. He knows exactly what to do. Exactly. Joey Bats, he's actually kind of having a re- renaissance, at least in Joey Bats standards in the New York for the New York Mets. I really don't see how any team could want this on their roster, but maybe. No. Yeah, I just I don't get this one at all. Like literally, he's perfect for the Mets for the rest of the season. Just leave him there. Just leave him there. Um, now, big game James, he's pitching like at least medium game James once in a while this year. I'm sorry, I'm so, I'm sorry for that one, but uh, James yeah. Shields, James Shields, you know, okay, James Shields or Dan Straley, it's kind of a toss up to me. Ooh, mm. it's why closer I, than it should be. Yeah, I know. Why, <laughs> why am I thinking? Why am I thinking this long on him? Um, eh. <laughs> I don't want either. That's my answer. That's a, that's probably the smart answer. But you know, one day we'll be GMs and do the show from our offices. Yeah, that would but be great. That would be that would be the dream. Uh, now, this is one that makes a ton of sense if you can afford it because he's expensive, twenty one million dollars the next two seasons, but the fact you have him under control and in theory for what he produces in this market, that is cheap. He's also 36. So he's gonna be like 38 by the time the deal's done. If my math's right. Um, Sensu Chu could be a really good asset. Like even for the Yankees with that short porch and right, he's got sneaky power. I think this is a very interesting piece of the puzzle here. Maybe it's a package deal with Beltre. Who knows? Yeah. You know, we brought him up a month ago, you know, after June when he was, he batted, 290 in May and then 347 in June. Um, July went back down 244. And then, you know, the first four games in August, he's 158. With that contract, you know, I I said that someone could come in and trade for him, like an Indians, if 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 the Rangers ate money. Um, I just don't see it now. I mean, he's obviously not going to be claimed. We know that. Um, so I, I just don't see it. I, I, re- I really don't see it anywhere. The Yankees does make sense after the Ellsbury news today. His career is probably over. They're going to have to pay him twenty six million next year. Um, I just don't see him moving anywhere, unfortunately. Well, the biggest problem is a lot of these teams contending don't want to go over the luxury tax, right? And, and which it's in years to come, it's going to get easier because that tax will go up. Yeah. But yeah, I just don't see it. You're absolutely like, right. like Chu could be a major target at the next deadline. When guys have money, that's but, true. Uh, yeah, I, I think he'd be a great fit for these teams, but financially, it can be very difficult. And we're not going to talk about the last one because he's already traded to the Oakland A's. Thank you, Jim Bowden. For how is he sixteen though? Because it's Jim Bowden. Yeah, how, but like, how's he? How is he <laughs> behind James Shields, Dan Straley, Matt Harvey? Like, I know it's Mike Fires, but he's been better than them this season. It doesn't. Uh, oh, Jim Bowden, man, come on. He does this. He does this. Ugh. But so, yeah, it'll be interesting. And there'll probably be some other names that pop up that like all of a sudden, you know, Justin Verlander type out of nowhere that they swing some big, big deal and magic happens. Make, make it Madison Bumgarner. Yeah. I mean, that would be, that would have been good if he had put him on there. Then he would have, he would have gotten a little more praise from me. All right, let's get to the next one. Next couple ones, actually, having to do with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. The longest tenured manager in baseball, Mike Sosha. Uh, is supposedly, according to sources, going to step down at the end of the season. But he has come out after that came out and said that that is poppycock, which is the most underrated word of all time. And I love when people do use it. And it's perfect for this guy since – actually, I was going to say since he's like 68. I've, I still think he's only like 57 years old, which is bananas to me that he's not older than that. But, yeah, he. you think he's going to step down this season? Or do you think that, the, that he should be even the manager next season? Shouldn't have been managing for the last few seasons. Uh, he's 59 years old. Just yeah. looked it up. 59. Yeah. Uh, Mike Trout turned 27 today. <laughs> Albert Pujols is old for baseball standards. He's 38, so you got that going for you. But, um, yes, Mike Sosha needs to go. Last night he pulled um, Tropiano after five innings of one-hit shutout baseball with the 62 pitches. Didn't understand that one at all. You had him in DFS, uh, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, tilted just a little <laughs> bit there. 
when you, when you miss the cash line by two points, just a little bit. Yep. Yep. Just I'm in the same bit. boat. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those where I'm watching it going, God, this can be a good night after all. And then what the hell did Mike Sosha? Oh, he went Mike Sosha. He went full poppycock. It was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he needs to go. I, I respect the fact he's still doing it. I respect the fact he knows baseball, but it sounds, it's going to sound probably bad, but the times have changed and he hasn't changed with the times. Yes. And we've seen that with other managers recently. You don't see a lot of these old timers still there anymore. And it's not that he doesn't know the game. It says he hasn't adjusted to it. And like you've seen Buck Showalter finding the way out. You got to think Sosha is going to be the same way. And a lot of the you know success of the Angels isn't his fault because so many injuries and other things. But still, there's got to be some accountability. And it's pretty impressive that they've kept him this long. And honestly, at this point, I don't know if they get, would ever fire him, but he's got to go. He really does. He needs to go sit on his lawn and wave his newspaper at kids and yell poppycock. I think he'd have so much more fun and success doing that. I don't think the owner, Artie Moreno, will ever fire him. I think I that's think so why either. I think that's why it came out and said that he's going to step down because it'll be one of those things where you got to say say to him, "Look, Mike, it's been 18 years, 19 years. It's time for a change. We don't want to fire you, so you're going to step down. We're still going to pay you what's on your contract or whatever, and it'll be a wink, wink, nod, nod. He'll have he'll be a consultant there. He's made enough money in his career. I think he makes like six million a year, which is like a lot for a manager." Um, but it's sort of you, you mentioned Buck Walter. It's what, and I know we're a baseball podcast, but it's what John Gruden's going to be like in the NFL this year. Yep. Um, he thinks he can just still run power eye down everyone's throat. Uh, it just doesn't work like that anymore. Um, so yeah, it's time for him to go. You, you you also made a great point that not all of it is his fault. When you give Pujols that kind of contract, and now you got to eat that. Josh Hamilton. You give Josh Hamilton that contract. <laughs> Garrett Richards has had had the talent and the stuff to be a frontline starter, at least number two probably, and he just gets hurt every step of the way, and he's out next year probably too. Some prospects haven't turned panned out, and yet in all of these years you've had the best player in baseball, and you haven't done anything with them, and they compete yeah. even though they suck. Like last year, they weren't a good baseball team, and they were without Trout for six weeks. And they still won like 80 games, which is credit to Mike Sosha because he always get his guys to play, but it's over. It's yeah, it's have changed. It's over. Yeah, I'm, I got, I'm having a fun with him, but he's done a hell of a job. A hell of a job. He was a great catcher for the Dodgers back in the day. One of the most like hard-ass catchers you'll find out there. But it also takes it into perspective that Mike Trout was like playing uh, Pee Wee baseball, barely out of T-ball when Mike Sosha started coaching the Angels. Probably time for a change. But what they'll probably do, because Moreno does love him, he'll get a job in the front office. He'll have a 35-minute drive to work in his fancy car every day, have an office he can sit and watch the game from, and, and you know, make a you know a couple hundred thousand dollars a year until he wants to call, call it good. He uh do you want to hear some of the uh potential candidates for oh, this, this place? But it'd be Mike Trout because he'd be one of the best player managers ever. Yeah, they, be, they should be one way to lock him up. That, that, that would be <laughs> that would be a good one, Bubba. Okay, I like where your thoughts at. Um, the first the one, the fir- can you guess the first one? Did you even look at the at the? Link? I have, I have, no, I did not open the link. Can you um, take a guess at the first one? Are these former players for the Angels? Um, at least well, no, some, some of them, but the first one that's there, Mike Matheny. No, but if Joe it Girardi. was funny if he was a Girardi is on there. The first yeah. one is Brad Osmus because people still love that guy. It's going to be catchers. I think Moreno has a catcher's thing. So I'll just go through them quick, and if you want to comment on them, you can. It's Brad Osmus. It's Eric Chavez. Gary D. Sarcina. Dino Ebel? Ebel? I don't know. But he's he's a, uh, he's a been with the Angels for a long time. Um, Joe Espada. Darren Erstad. I, I, I expected that. Girardi. Josh Paul, who's been the guy. I think he's uh, – yeah, he's their bench coach now. Um, but he was with the – I think he was with the uh, Yankees for a while. That's been a guy. Ron Renneke, who's the Red Sox bench coach right now, former manager of the Brewers, and then Rob Thompson, um, who I believe yeah. has been a name with that's out the there. I think he's the Phillies bench coach right now. So yeah. some interesting names on there. I highly doubt Joe Girardi is going to go out to L.A. To, to manage when he basically said he wants to be close to home. So I don't think that's happening. Yeah, that's not happening. I, I can see um, – Rob Thompson's an interesting one. He's been a big name. He used to be a base coach for the Yanks, a little bench coach action there. Said he's with the Phillies now. He's been pretty popular in a lot of the searches. That one could be there, but uh, I think Dee Sarcina 
he's been mentioned a lot in uh, some other talks, and he's, he's a longtime angel. He's been with their system for a while. Him or Darren Erstad, I heard he's been doing really good things in the minors, uh, managing down there, and he can bring some kind of that younger lifeblood. Like he was there in the Tim Salmon days when the Angels actually got good again. So he could kind of uh, – I think he might have still been there during the Rally Monkey or it might have been a little after the Rally Monkey, but he's pretty close to then. So uh, that can know too. So he could definitely bring a little life back there. Those two make a lot of sense unless they want to go with a little more experience. So Eric Chavez is interesting because Billy Epler uh, hired him away from the Yankees. Uh, to be some sort of scout or assistant to the GM or something like that. And Erstad, or Chavez wants to be a manager. So that could be kind of a sneaky Aaron Boone type of hire by the Angels just to be safe. But That's, a, that's interesting because uh, I remember the heyday of the A's when, you know, Giambi's running around in thongs and cigars and Chavez is running around in the locker room. I just can't picture that as a manager, but hey, <laughs> YOLO. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the other problem that's happening in Anaheim right now is Mike Trout, the greatest player – that we've seen in our lifetime, possibly, um, outside of Barry Bonds. Uh, Mike Trout, he's got a bad wrist issue, took a cortisone shot. Should they shut him down? I will give my two cents real quick is I'm okay with shutting him down. I know we want to see him play baseball. I don't want him to get seriously hurt ever. Like if it's something you can manage now and risk serious injury, yes. If it's something minor, sure, we'd love to see him play baseball. We still have like two months to go. I'd like to see him play another 45 games. But at the same time, I'd rather see him play the next – for 15 years and without any problems, nothing hampering him because the wrist, wrist injury is no joke the way he plays. So make sure it's completely healed, please. Yeah. You're 11 and a half back in the wild card. Shut him yeah. down. It's over. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So she's going to step down. Like we said, probably our pseudo step down. Um, and there's no reason to, to really, really hurt this guy, especially when he wants to be healthy. You know, when he goes to the Phillies in 2020, we want to make sure that he's healthy for that so that they're back in the good graces and the MLB can mar- market him correctly, maybe in Philadelphia. Who knows? Yeah, there's a chance. All right, one more trade. We are wondering when this was going to happen. It's uh, Echeverria to the Pirates from the Rays. Uh, and really, I don't want to talk about that, Bubba. I mean, it's just a defensive you know, guy for the Pirates, a little bit more depth there. The reason why I brought it up is uh, it's Willie Adama's time, Bubba. He's good. He should – be playing for the next two months and maybe for the next 10 years with the Rays. With the Rays, sorry, three and a half years, we'll give it. Yeah. And he probably won't make it through the contract. So three and a half years, Willie Adamas, it's his time. Yeah, real quick before Adamas, at least we have to acknowledge the Pirates are a cash tag good, surprisingly. And um, this is a good move for them defensively because they're actually surprising the crap out of me right now. But Willie Adamas, this is about damn time because he's been crushing the minors. We talked about – I think it was last trade deadline when they went and got Echeverria or even beginning of the season when they said, okay, we'll get rid of Dickerson, but let's keep Echeverria so Adamas can't play. None of that made sense. Well, now it's his time. It's gotten off to a little slow start with the everyday role, but I love the fact they flat out said it's his job for the rest of the season. Like there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. When he was called up earlier, it was like, hey, you're going to play here and there, and you kind of you're off the bench and pinch hitting and whatever, and you're back down to the minors right away. This is his job for two more months. Love. We, we raved about the Rays last week with the moves they made. Austin Meadows is up right now because Tommy Pham, unfortunately, got hurt, but he'll be back next year. There's no need to rush him back either. I love the idea of getting Meadows two months of full at bats. I think it's perfect. Um, this team with Jake Bowers, you know, Duffy's young. There's so many pieces of this team. Kiermaier's locked down. They traded Ramos. They have a couple okay catchers. The pitching staff should be healthy next year, hopefully. It's hard to catch up with the Red Sox and Yankees, but this team, we've seen them grind out to wild cards. Then they have a team that's competitive enough for the postseason in, in a smaller series. I love what they're doing, and this could be really, really fun for the Tampa Bay guys. Should be fun for them for sure. Um, I the William Adams thing's got he's like you said, slow start, two hundred nine. He's striking out about thirty four percent of the time, and he's not hitting the ball hard. If he's hitting the ball hard, I'd, I'd be a little bit more excited for the rest of the season, but. You know, if you have him in Dynasty and whatnot, it's exciting to see exactly what he can do when they're not wasting him sitting behind a guy who just plays defense. It's might as well give the kid a shot, and he's going to be – no matter what he does this season, you would think he's going to be the starting shortstop next year at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I completely agree. So it's going to be good to see keep making some more moves. And, oh, my God, Devin Travis just killed one. I didn't um, want to talk about it because it's just it's, – <laughs> Drew Pomeran's day is just the worst days of the week. It's really terrible. All right, you want to talk about something that could be really terrible? Is Rich Ankiel wants to a Rick? I always call him Rich. Rick Ankiel wants to make a return as a reliever in baseball next year. It's been uh, quite a while since we've seen Rick. 
Um, once a heralded pitcher then couldn't pitch because he couldn't throw a strike. So they put him in the outfield and he hit okay there for a while. He uh, retired in 2013. He's now 39. He's going to come back next year, he says, because he can throw a nasty curveball steal and a very, very hard, high fastball. So this just seems ridiculous to me, but hey, it's baseball. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think anything's going to happen. You know, maybe he gets a shot. I mean, he works for the Cardinals, so maybe he gets a shot to go to spring training and see non-roster invite and see what he's got. But yeah, the, the guy didn't pitch in 2004. I mean, it's been 14 years, and by the time it starts next year, uh, carry the two, it would be 15 years. So I don't think be close to 40. Uh, we know there's only one 40-year-old in sports that is worthy of playing when he's 40. I don't need to say his name. He's the GOAT. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 just not going to happen, Bubba. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I can throw a mean curveball, too, in wiffle ball. Yeah, I can throw a high fastball, but it might not be more than 85. <laughs> but I'm a lefty, too. Yeah, pretty bad stuff there. So let's uh, do a little fancy baseball talk here. We still have two months of baseball, but, hey, never too early for a little – 2019 look ahead we can talk about the um you know 2019 top 10 we can debate it as much as you want this is a top 300 list for dynasty that i'm looking at am i looking at the right thing here mo yeah you're looking at the top 300 and it's it's it bubba it's basically i mean this is from a month ago uh from espn and it the dynasty they've got just sort of a <laughs> player valuation formula not to bore everybody but this is how how they're sort of doing it is you know second half performance here is 10 percent um ne next year performance predicting and the next four years is like 22.5 percent so that's what tristan um what the hell is his name tristan cockroft cockroft yeah that's right i'd probably get that wrong too um and that would be probably sound terrible but yeah so <laughs> that's how they're doing it but you know we can go back and forth here i think we Bubba, i think we both can agree that trout is number one yeah i'm okay. good with that i think i think he could be number one as long as he can walk yeah, that's probably true. And by the way, he's only 26, folks. So he it's turned 27 today. 27 oh, today. excuse me. Happy birthday, Mikey. Hope that wrist is okay. Um, okay, so Trout number one. Who do you got number two? I'm good with Betts there. I think um, – and if Trout misses the rest of the year, Betts might be your – well, that's a discussion we can have. Betts or Jose Ramirez for MVP? Take your bias out of it. I know, I know. Um, it's way closer than we thought it would be when it was just yeah, Betts versus Trout. If, <laughs> yeah, if you look at, I mean, if you look at both the seasons just with basic stats, um, he's got, got a, Jose. Jose. Yeah, I still have Betts. Got a much better average, better OBP, better slugging. He, he's just. But where are the Indians at without Jose? I, I think, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I was going to respond to that. Where are they without Lindor? But then you can say the same thing with J.D. Martinez. That's, I think Martinez is bigger than Lindor. That's why that's bigger to me. Yeah, and Jose Ramirez plays great defensively. So that'll if Trout's out, it's, it's really it's, interesting. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be close, but I think it'll end up being bets. That average, I mean, he's 42 points higher than, than Ramirez. And I it'll know probably, Ramirez. It'll, it'll, it'll probably be the courtesy bets MVP since he should have had it a year or two. The, ago. the issue with bets is he gets hurt because he's a leadoff guy. So he's only yeah. got 58 RBIs compared to Ramirez. And, you know, he's 17 games less from when he was out. So that, that kind of hurts him, too. So you have, you have to project what he was there, too. He probably loses out of those 17 games. Let's be conservative. Call it three homers. Probably misses about ten RBIs. So it's it it'll be interesting fantasy season. We can we can have, definitely talk about that next week for sure. But yeah, I I would go bets number two as well. Real quick before we move on, I want to apologize to Mike Sosha. Nick Tropiano just got put on the DL with arm issues. So my yeah. bad. So I'm happy Mike. about it. Yeah. So happy about it, but my bad. Yes. Sorry about that, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, who do you guys so? Let's just but before we keep going, the Dynasty 300 from uh, what was it a month ago? Tristan's is Trout, Betts, Lindor, Machado, Ramirez, Benintendi, Judge, Arenado, Correa, Turner. Who's number three for you? Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez. Okay, I absolutely. This guy's a, a freak, and he's multi position eligible. Absolutely love him. See, the thing about it is, and he has – obviously, he has Lindor. Um, I think the multi-position really puts Ramirez there. Um, the Lindor part, you look at this whole thing, and, it, and you just look in the top – I mean, the top 15 
he's got six shortstops. It's crazy. So that means you could wait on Lindor a little bit. Um, Manny Machado might lose third base eligibility next year, which actually, yeah, he's included on there in the shortstop. So yeah. I think I'm going Ramirez 3-2. I think the top three is pretty easy for the most part, unless you don't think Ramirez, like at the beginning of the season, Bob, I, I think I said that, you know, I'm kind of a little bit worried about Ramirez because he went like 11 to 29 and only stole 17 bases. And now all of a sudden he's he doubled his walk percentage. His hard hit is way up. Um, he's obviously got more homers than last year. He's got way more stolen bases. So that was my thought at the beginning of the season. And now, whereas BABIP is even lo way lower than it was last season, his ISO is way up, um, I would tend to go Ramirez as well. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that there. And, um, I, I don't want to derail this completely, but they have Jose Altuve at number 11 and how the mighty have fallen there when he's still leading the American League in batting average. But, um, yeah, number four could be interesting, though, and – I love me some Manny Machado, but I know we have to, to, to make decisions now. I want to know where he goes. Yeah, where, does he, yep. where does he end up? Because that makes a big factor here. Because in reality, if you give me Nolan Arenado and Coors Field, I still think he's one of the top five players in baseball. Um, uh, it'd be between Machado and Arenado for me at number five or number four. So I think that I'm going to go Lindor at four. You know, very young. He's got the stolen bases. He's probably going to go, you know, he's got two months left. So if he gets eight stolen bases, that would be a lot. Um, but he might get, you know, 30, let's call it conservative, 22, 23. He might get 35, 22, 23 with almost a 300 average. I, I'm going to go Lindor, even though there's a bunch of shortstops that you can take. Yeah, I dig it. Um, so I have Machado and Arenado, four and five. Who's your five? Yeah, I'm probably going Machado. Um, he's going to be 27 next year. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty insane that he's only 27, sort of like Trout, and he hasn't gotten paid yet. That's just how good Trout was, that he had to that had to get paid, had to take that money right away. Um, so I'm going Manny Machado. And main reason why I'm going Manny Machado is because I do think he's going to Philly next year. Yeah, if he's in Philly in that ballpark, that's just terrifying. That could be a phenomenal play there. And uh, he could still be – he might get third base back there if they like one of the shortstop situations. They have Franco. That could be really interesting there. Mm -hmm. um, number six. Now it gets a little trickier because, you know, you got Benintendi, you got Judge, you got Carlos Correa, Trey Turner. I think he's – you could argue him there. It's just a matter of health because when he's healthy, he's amazing. What I'm going to do, though, and it might really make people weirded out here, but if – and we're projecting 2019, I'm kind of going off how 2018 is – my number six can be Freddie Freeman for the fact that how bad first base has been this year. It's deep, but it's not top heavy like it's mm -hmm. been in years past. Freddie Freeman just elevates your first base position in your team so much more, and he's still only 28. He's still going to be in that beautiful ballpark, and the team's getting better and better around him. I really like Freddie Freeman, and six it might be too high, and that's fine. I get it. But just preliminary thoughts, I think he could be a really good six. Think about the old days when Votto and those guys were in the middle of the pack. Give me Freeman at six. So – you rank him six. Yes. You, depending on the league that you're in, there's a possibility based off of whatever ADP is going. And like right now, he's, he, he was 12 there. And I, I get the whole first base thing. It's him and Goldschmidt. Um, would you still, like, if you had the sixth pick, you're taking him six no matter what? Or do you think that there's a possibility that you could, well, you wouldn't be able to wait? Let's say you, let's, let's make it easier. If you had the ninth pick, you're, do you think Freeman still drops to you? Most likely because everyone's infatuated with Red Sox and Yankees players. I, I, I know it sounds really lazy, but it's so true. It really is. Like they'll see Aaron Judge and Ben Intendi, and then you already know next offseason Stanton's, oh, Stanton, he's so much more comfortable after a year in the Bronx and playing with this team. And I can see all the headlines coming out right now. Like I, it's, everybody sleeps on Freddie Freeman. He's, he doesn't get the respect he deserves. And I think he falls to the back end of the first round. I just think I have him ranked higher than that. But, um, Yes, I think he could fall to me. If in a real in a perfect world, if I had the ninth pick, I, if I could get Aaron Otto or Freeman, I would be ecstatic. I think I could get one of the two. So I'm gonna go. What are we on? We're on. I didn't six, say my sixth, six, right? Six, correct. Yeah, I got Aaron Otto at six. Um, he's gonna get one more year, or at least probably a whole, or at least a half a year in Colorado. You know, I kind of mentioned, and they're playing better lately. 
and, and they do have a shot in the division and the wild card, uh, and they just couldn't trade him. But if it was flipped, you probably had to trade him, and I was all about that. I'm probably going him at, at, at six just because he's safe, and you you need that safe guy in the first round. Yeah, my seven, and I don't even see him in the top. Oh, he's twenty one. Give me JD Martinez. Um, Man, you're he's infatuated not, with these Boston Yankees guys. I'm I told you it happens, but um, <laughs> I'm infatuated with him because he drops forty plus home runs and drives in hundred and fifteen to twenty plus RBIs, mm-hmm. and you can't find that as often as we think we can. We can find twenty to twenty five homers. You can't find forty to forty five that often, and that is a gigantic difference. Uh, that you can set things up, and he hits for an okay average. Like it doesn't kill you like some power hitters do. So I'll take JD Martinez at seven. Yes, people at me. I don't care. Yeah, I'm not going to take him at seven. I'm still going to take Judge at seven. Um, I I just think if he didn't get hurt, he's hitting 40, 45 this year. We've, we've said I, that, but we've said that back to back seasons. What's that? If he didn't get hurt. Oh no, I get that, but you know this is. I mean, he got hit on the wrist, so it's it's one of those. It happened to Freddie Freeman too. <laughs> It's not like a, a crazy play in the outfield or a hamstring or something like that. It's it's, it's a fluke one, but I'm going Judge. Um, you know, I just I I've been wrong about him this season. I thought he'd come back a little bit, and he's still striking out 30 percent of the time, but he's also walking 15 percent of the time too. And you know, you he's going he'd probably get to 10 stolen bases too, which is a plus. So you're looking at 40, 45, and 10. And that's pretty awesome. So I'm taking him at seven. Yeah, my eight will be a guy that dropped down from what you guys have, but I'll go Frank Cheat, Lindor at eight. Uh, he is very, very good still. I just like some of those other stability guys there, and as deep as shortstop is, like you mentioned, for me, ranking-wise, that's how I would rank it out. Um, but And I probably still wouldn't take him at eight, but you have to eventually rank guys where they deserve to go, not where you would pick them to say, but uh, give me Frankie at eight. Yeah, when you get to eight for me um... – it's a I have tough a question. One. I have a question for you, real quick. Sorry. Yes. With the season that Javi Baez is having, yes, would I you know. rather gamble on Baez over Lindor? No. Real, real talk. Okay. That's no, quick. I still, I'm still a Lindor guy. Um, that that walk, that walk percentage for me, the it kill, it's it really scary for Baez. Where it's terrifying. Know, it, it, somebody figures him out. I just don't think he's a safe pick in the first round. Um, I don't, and I'm not sure I'll own. Now he's got three. We'll see what his eligibility is next year. I'm not sure I'll own Baez anywhere next year. You're gonna have to pay a premium for him. That's gonna be hard to do. So, At his yeah. ADP, I'm not sure I'd, I'd pay which, the price. Which I know I keep derailing this, but that's it's okay. No, it's good. I like this. Um, what would you rather do? Because we're talking volatile guys here: Javi Baez or Trey Turner? I know Trey doesn't have the power, but they're both very volatile and humongous upside for what they can do. Wow. Both come at a premium. <laughs> As I say that, I probably go bias. Yeah, because it's weird because he's got the power, but Turner's got probably better plate discipline. Yeah. So and second base too. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's Ramirez, it's Altuve, it's him. And then after that, you look at it. You got Albies, who has had a pre- has had a very good season for his rookie season. You wonder if he kind of has a sophomore slump. And then, like the s- second base, uh, you know, at fifty six is Dozier. He's the mm-hmm. sixth second baseman. So you might have to pay a premium for to get one of those guys early, rather than you know pay for the shortstops. That I, it's 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 a really tough one. It really is. Okay, so back to wherever we were. <laughs> yeah, we, what's your nine? My nine, because I would I be Frenchy at eight. So yeah. oh, this gets interesting now. Nine. It is pretty tight. I, I don't, I'm going to go Ben and Tendi at nine because he's got that 20 20 upside with maybe 20 30 or, I mean, 30 20 type upside or 20 30. Depends on what he's doing that year. But he's uh, a 300 plus batting average, also pretty tremendous. He's going to get you at least four, if not five mm-hmm. county categories, which I aim to get in first rounds if I can. And Ben Intendi's got that for you at the back end of a first round at number nine. So I'll go Ben Intendi at nine. Yeah, especially the way he started the season. Um, he was terrible for the first like five weeks. And then he finally he kind of brought it on. And same goes with this kid. Um, and that's Alex Bregman. I've got him at nine. Um, like he's 13. Remember. He's 13 on Tristan's list. And that was a month ago. Um, so think what he's done in the last month. I got him at nine. And he's going to have both eligibility because he's playing a bunch of shortstop now. 
So he's going to have shortstop and third base. So you can kind of you can kind of take him and then sort of like the Jose Ramirez. And I don't think Machado, but sort of like the Jose Ramirez, Javi Baez, you can take those guys and then figure out sort of the rest of your draft based off how it kind of drops into you. So I got I got Bregman at nine. Yeah, I, I can I can get that really well. He'll be right outside of my top ten with a handful of guys. Like I mentioned, Altuve, he's not going to crack it, which is crazy considering he was. People did argue for him possibly being number one over Trout in mm-hmm. the preseason, but a sure number two. I know I have him in a bunch of leagues where I was in second pick. We have him in the league with second pick, and he's been good, but not what you expect. My number ten, and it's mainly because he'll be wearing pinstripes next year, is Bryce Harper. Um, it's, a, it's it's a guy that never has lived up to what we think he can be. It's one of those, though, that one of these years he's going to put it all together, and all the arguments you've heard of Betts first Trout, Harper's name is going to end up in there one of these years because he is that good when it clicks. He's a guy where, you know, emotions get in the way. I think being on a crappy team like he is can't affect how he's playing at times. I wouldn't be shocked by that at all. So you go put him on a team with a pennant race. You know how scary he could probably be in a pennant race? Um I got Harper at number 10. I think he's he's next year's version of Giancarlo Stanton moving up draft boards. I am not taking Harper in the first round. I will not do it. Maybe I'm an idiot for it. You And by the way, I don't think he's going to the Yankees either. Well, he's going to go to a team that's going to be really damn good. Yeah, the Dodgers. Team. No. <laughs> yes. He's gonna, no, the Cubs. I don't care. Anywhere but no, he's going, he's, he's, Sorry, sorry, Bubba. I hate to tell you he's going to the Dodgers. I've been they, they get everybody. Pretty, they get pretty everybody. spot on about the Dodgers the last couple of years. So I, yeah, I think he is. I could see it. Him and him and LeBron both going to LA. Fuck me. So number ten I, again. I I probably am the same. So you don't have Judge in the top ten, huh? No, I'm. I love Aaron Judge. Don't get me wrong, but I just can't. I can't buy in full. If I'm going to take a gamble on a guy in the first round, it's not going to be Judge. If he falls, okay, say we're in a 15 teamer and he falls to like 12 or 13, I can definitely look at him, but not top 10. So 10, I'm going to go ahead and take the value here, even though he's been hurt all year, and I'm going to go Chris Bryant. Um, I, I think – I know I said you, you want to be safe in the first round if you can, but he's been hurt all year. I mean, let's face it. The guy has so much talent. So I'm going to go Bryant there, and let me just – a couple things. Let me just ask you. I am so sad that I don't now. I could this could change before <laughs> next season. My binky, my binky, Carlos Correa. Yeah. I will still be all over him next year. Trust me. It's just it's how deep the position is now. There are a lot of guys there at short stuff. Like I said, um, I think it's funny. I think this is probably the first year. Well, it's it's early again. We still have a month, we still have two months left of the season, and then the off season to figure everything out. I think this is the first season we could see a, a pitcher not in the in, in the first round in a twelve team league. Oh, definitely. Um, you you mentioned Correa. How concerned are you about the? You think it's just injury based, or is this power outage kind of legit? No, I think it's a lot injury based. Um, you know, I'm really disappointed. Like I'm, it's to the point where I probably should have traded Correa instead of Goldschmidt in my twenty team. Keeper League with that trade I got basically murdered on. I mean, still two months left, but I got killed there. Um, no, I think – I mean, still 13 homers. I mean, he's still going to be at like 26 or 30 if he plays a full season. It's not – it's nothing crazy. So I, I I think he'll be all right. The hard hit was down. That, that's kind of concerning a little bit. and, and uh, But I think he'll still be fine. The kids got all the tools in the world. Yeah, so you take Chris Bryant over J.D. Martinez, Freddie Freeman, guys like that. I forgot about Bryce J.D. Harper. I, I definitely take Bryant over Bryce Harper. Um, I think I take Bryant over Freddie Freeman because I just think he's got more upside than Freddie Freeman. Even though I do love Freddie Freeman, I understand the first base is terrible this year. Um, so I, I, I still take Bryant there. I forgot about J.D. Martinez. I probably throw J.D. Martinez there. It's on me. Probably should have had it written down, but. Um, I kind of I, I lost my thing, but I probably have JD there. But I mean, Bryant's right there. Like in a twelve team league, I'm still taking him first round if he's there. Um, and then it's you know Freeman, Gene Carlo. If you if Gene Carlo ends the season the way he's the way he's played in in July, that'll be an interesting one too. Um, my one question to you, with the way Matt Carpenter has gone, like what is going to be his ADP for next year? I mean, it's it, he's. He's been unbelievable since June. 
he's been amazing. There's no sugarcoating that. I my personal place for him would be say, late thirties, uh, just because of all the other depth. I got to throw some pitchers in there and everything. I, I'd have to look at him more. I'd say late thirties, early forties. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to be up there in the mid to late twenties, and he's not a second round pick to me. Um, I'd still have to take him late third round, early fourth round for me personally. But we'll have to see where that one goes because he's going to get some steam for sure. Because he already had some steam last year, guys saying he's going to turn it around. He still got him in like the fifth or sixth round or something. And people thought that was value. Um, th- this might get even crazier. Yeah, next season's fancy. I mean, I feel like it's always crazy. But this season has been weird because Goldsmith had the, had the power out as a start. Then he came back. Um, Bregman and Benatendi have brought it on. You've got Jose Ramirez just locking down a top three pick probably next year. JD, if you got him in the third round, I think is what was ADP this year. You were you were paid handsomely for that. And you've got guys like, you know, um, who, who did I just have? I mean, Baez comes out of nowhere. Nelly Cruz getting older. Like you just you just talked about um Carpenter's gonna be 33 in November. So you don't know how long he's gonna be around for here in terms of um, you know how long he's played for. It's going to be a very interesting season in terms of the ADPs. And then unless you have something else on this last question, as I kind of get it open here, is Matt Carpenter, the NL MVP this year? <laughs> that was a debate. I was wondering about too. Um, he's in the argument. He's definitely in the argument for it. It's tough because the, the, the Dodgers don't have like an exact, an exact uh, option for you there. The Cubbies really don't have a guy running away with it unless it's Javi Baez. Javi Baez say, is it's probably him. Yeah, that's who I'd be leaning towards mainly because the Cardinals are garbage. Yeah. Uh, they're done. Hashtag done, like I've been saying for a long time. But, um, yeah, I'd say it's Baez's right now. But you know how quickly that can fall apart. It's going to be real interesting because <sighs> – yeah, I'd say I'd say Baez right now if I had to pick one because you know you look at the Phillies, it's kind of unless Aaron Nola gets the Cy Young and the MVP, where are you going to go with that? So yeah, give me a Javi Baez. Unless Carpenter somehow hits like forty, which he still probably could do. I think um, that was in my predictions. Was twenty nine right now? It might have been. Yeah. If the Rockies somehow make the playoffs, I think you have to give it to Arenado just because last year it was him and Blackman stealing votes from each other, and this year Blackman. If you drafted Blackman where he where his ADP was, you probably – I mean, he's, he's had a fine, okay season, but he's old. He's not stealing any base anymore, um, and he just hasn't been hasn't been as as good as advertised, unfortunately. Uh, last question I have for you. When you look at some a little farther down, just for fun, we, will, we could go on this list all day. But he's got Ronald Acuna at 24 and Juan Soto at 31. Thoughts? Uh, I go Soto. Do you think that's the right spot for them, though? Ooh, um, that's basically mid-second round. Yes, and yes because this is dynasty. Yeah, I'm talking in real life. Where do you think they go? So in a like redraft, a redraft. In, yeah, in a redraft, they probably don't go that high. Soto might because he's just been unbelievable. And Went deep plate, while we're recording. Yeah, his plate discipline is just incredible. Um, you know, Acuna, if I just go to his page real quick, I'm going to do a – Sleeper in the bus, Eno Saris here, and talk while I'm opening it. You know, he came up late. The strikeout rate is really high. Um, a homer to fly ball is high, 18%. I mean, he's there. I'm not sure. I think he'll probably, just because of the name, God, I mean, in a 12-team league, he's probably just off the top of my head, Bubba. He's probably around 50, and maybe that's too low. And maybe he's probably gone before that just because of the name power, the age, and the tools that he's shown from last season. Probably too low, especially with the steals, but he hasn't stolen a ton. Um, you know, 57 games, he got six steals. Uh, he's only been caught once, so he's only tried seven times. He's got to he's got to steal more to really get up in that upper upper top third. Yeah, it'll be fun to see how it works. We may have to revisit this list later on because there's a lot of fun name, a lot of fun names we could play with on this. How we'll kill the time in November, my friend. Yes, we will. All right, let's get to the last one. Let's get down on the farm. Um, there was a new top 100 prospects after the draft with MLB Pipeline. Um, you know, we don't have to go in depth on this, Bubba. 
Uh, the one thing that I that I can tell you is I'm very happy to see Nick Senzel still up there. He's at four. Um, Mackenzie Gore keeps going up. I'm excited to see him. At, he's at 11. Um, and then Jesus Lazardo is at 12. That's a guy I've been waiting for this season. He just started in AAA at a great start, six innings, I think one run um, and, and six Ks. So he's there too. And the guy that's on everyone's list who took Casey Mize deep yesterday was Royce Lewis for the Twins, the number yeah. one pick last year. It's going to be quick, I think, Bob. I think it's really, really going to be quick for him. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention right now. They got him at 10th right now. It's cool. 10th, 11th, 12th. Lewis, Gore, Lizardo all drafted very, very recently. And, like, these other guys are great as well that are ahead of him. But Lewis is just tearing up baseball right now. Like, it took him a little while, like, all young kids to get comfortable. And now it's like every day when you see the MLB Pipeline tweets about last night's performances, it seems like Royce Lewis is in there somewhere every freaking day. Um, Mackenzie Gore has looked filthy once he's kind of getting his control figured out. But Jesus Lazardo, very, very impressive. He made like two or three starts in Stockton. I was lucky to see one of them against San Jose to start the season. And he's already up in AAA, like you said. He could be a postseason reliever for them. He could be that guy that finishes out in AAA and he's ready to rock and roll at the beginning of next season. Um, maybe when Puck gets healthy, we get to see both of them, and it makes the A's that much better next season. This kid is filthy, very, very filthy. So that's impressive. Um, it's interesting to see Victor Robles still up there at five, which is good. We need to get him healthy. Got Ports Whitley back from his suspension. Astros could look forward to seeing him possibly out of the bullpen in like a closers role even uh, if uh, Asuna and all that doesn't pan out. Um, he's interesting. Eloy Jimenez, they're saying, might be up sooner than later. All those top guys, those make – Perfect sense. Brendan Rodgers just got promoted to AAA. If you go a little farther, Joe Adele just got the bump to AA. This guy is really, really good for the Angels. Um, yep. Keep an eye on him indeed. That guy's special. Hunter Green, another top pick from last year's draft, up to 18 already. Um, Casey Myers, you mentioned the top pick, and this draft is already up to 20. There's a ton of guys that are making moves. Kyle Wright's at 24, just got promoted to AAA, made his debut. Um, like you said, I won't, re I won't go over all of these because – as much as you like prospects, as I scroll through this list, I can talk about pretty much every single person that I go through on your catching Herrera at 26 is outstanding. So yeah, this is one of those like, Nick Madrigal. He's um, by the way, he's gone from rookie ball to low A to high A already. And he just struck out for the first time, like his 80th pro at bat. And yeah, he's 30 seconds. He's, 30 he's going to so. be, he's going to be here next year. I, I, I really, I, I really do believe that um, he's, he's tremendous. A um, couple guys that have sort of graduated, if you will. Willie Calhoun is 48. He's up. He's up now. You mentioned AJ Puck. You know, hopefully he gets back. Your boy Joey Bart is opened up. About at, to say that he's at, at 35 is at 35. He's there. Alex Reyes. You know, even though you know, I, I don't really consider him a prospect, but I, I guess he still is. They still have him at 33. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll we'll see a few of these guys in the Arizona Fall League. The Red Sox somehow have one in there. Michael Chavis, who was suspended for steroids this year, he's come back hot. I wonder if he could help out down the road. I I don't know the whole. Um, I want. I don't know if you get suspended in the minors if you're ineligible for the playoffs. That's a that's a question that maybe I'll have to ask on Twitter. I'm not. I'm not really sure how they do that. I assume that he is, um, and I don't. Not sure they bring him up anyway. But but he could be an outside shot there. At at a hundred, Bubba is Nolan Gorman. Um, he's been he has too. been hot. I mean, he's been tremendous. Um, and he dropped to them. He's supposed to go top 10. He dropped, I think he dropped like 16 or something like that. The one guy I was surprised, um, I think if the, if the, the list was done again before he went to triple a, he would have been higher, but, but it's Peter Alonzo for the Mets. Yeah. Um, that was pretty low. Who, who's at 63 and he, but he's just had trouble at triple a. I mean, he's still got 11 bombs in 42 games. He's batting 230, and his K percentage has gone up to like 29%. So I'm not sure what really is going on there. He's normally around, you know, between 15 and 18. It's spiked all the way to 29%. And to do that in AAA where, Bob, I think we've seen over the last few years, guys have just jumped right to, depending on the organization, you know, obviously the Rays like them to, to go through every, every um, you know, level if possible. I think it's changed where a lot of guys have been coming right from double A because triple A is sort of that you're a major leaguer ish, but really you're there because you're old and you're tr still trying to get what that, maybe that one last check here and there. It's it, it, it just seems what triple A is like to me now. And it's getting that way. And you had Soto go right from double A. 
So I'm a little concerned about Alonzo, but you know, hopefully he can figure it out. Yeah, it's really interesting, but it's it's an awesome, awesome list. Absolutely loaded. Um, I didn't get the team by team breakdowns, but there's a ton of Padres on that list, a ton of yes. Yankees, a ton of of uh, White Sox, and a couple others. But uh, just the Padres alone is pretty damn impressive. Going through that, they might get some more when they trade Kirby Yates or something. Who knows? But um, yeah, awesome top 100 list, and we can dig into that a little deeper as well a little later. That'll wrap us up, but we didn't think we'd have much to talk about. We sure did have a lot to talk about in the end of it. Uh, any final thoughts? No, it's uh, yeah. I thought it was going to be like a forty-minute one. We went a little bit longer than that, but that's fine. That means we had a lot more to talk about. I think, you know, going through that top ten, it's like we have two months left of baseball, and it's exciting. But then you look at the next year because, you know, like the uh, the great fantasy baseball invitational. My team has sucked this year, so it's like I'm I'm roaring to get to, into next year, and you know, we'll we'll be there in a, in a short eight months or six months, whatever the hell it is. But yeah, exciting stuff to talk about. Yep, it'll be a lot of fun, and it'll be here before you know it because they got football starting in a few weeks, and then baseball right around the corner yet again. We got two months of two months of regular season left. We got the awards. We can talk about some more, some more postseason coming up, but a lot to do. But this was around the base with Bubba and Mo, episode seventy-five. The Yankees are dead, folks. Catch you guys later. <laughs> See you. <ya. laughs>